what is up guys, team I do to 91 here and uh, welcome to my first top 5 video that I'm going to be doing. So I've been a fan of the Sonic the Hedgehog uh, franchise for a very long time as you can not tell by my two previous rants that I've had. Um, but this time I'm instead of being uh, weird and discouraging other people, I'm going to be helpful by just broadening your minds a little bit. Now then note, these are facts that only I know and out of personal experience, and we're only going to be looking into a specific type of the Sonic the Hedgehog franchise, in which case that's going to be the spin-off comic Sonic Universe. In which case then, um, yeah, that's basically what I've decided to do today. Um, like I said, these are personal facts. Also, since because there's a lot of different stuff I'm going to be revealing about the plot, I am going to be giving you a spoiler alert. For pretty much almost every single one of these entries, it is a spoiler alert. Just letting you know now, so if you don't want spoilers, we haven't read Sonic Universe, just don't watch this video. Um, so yeah, this is my top five things you didn't know about Sonic Universe. Um, starting off with number five. We have um, just basically the fact that SBO is a prince. And um, this came as a surprise to many different people. Um, if you look into Sonic Universe Journey to the East, this is part 4 of 4, um, also known as Sonic Universe issue number 16. Um, we learn about SBO's different clan that he's involved in with the many different houses serving under the Iron Domain, whether or not he's a traitor or not, we don't know. Our heroes decide to go ahead and trust him and follow him to where the so-called bride of his clan lives. Pretty much the brides are the leaders like queens and such. Um, at one point during the bit, um, with, after the audience with the bride, um, she gives Espio a task to do. And he replies by, in excitement, I might add, by saying thank you, mo stops, corrects himself, then says master. Um, as it turns out, and this has been confirmed, the bride is actually Espio's mother. And uh, so I think that's pretty cool. He's uh, Technically, Espio has what it takes to lead over his um, chameleon ninja clan. Which, that's pretty fun and cool. Anyways, um, on to the ex- and on to- ugh. Okay, let's try that again. On to the next entry, at number four, we have Silver vs. Enerjack. Now then, this brings us into um, the Silver story, and uh, this one happened a little while ago, and been having a lot of fun. And it was very fun, and involved uh, Silver going to an alternate dimension and such, but he ended up having to battle against the being known as Enerjack. Now then, when I went around and started talking about this and how cool it was and exciting, people didn't know what I was talking about, and so I'm like, what? How do you guys not know Enerjack? Basically what Enerjack is, it is an overpowered being of chaos energy, that is also Knuckles. Basically, Enerjack is an evil version of Knuckles. He looks like an Egyptian badass for no reason. But anyways, as he's in this alternate dimension, it is a world where um, Enerjack was never defeated, and because of that, he took over and did all kinds of really messed up stuff. But yeah, so that's just a little known fact, but very fun. Okay then, fact number three, probably my favorite fact. Um is that Tails makes a Princess Bride reference. And that's just pretty funny itself. So, um, in the Tales Adventure Part 4 of Sonic Universe, which is um, Sonic Universe issue number 20, um, we actually find out, we learn about these weird guys called the Battlebird Armada. They are do they're messing around with Tails' private island, which they didn't know it was his. And they get into this fight, and it's a really fun story that also involves um, Altoine and Bunny's honeymoon which is um, pretty weird, but we learn about this character called Dr. Fukukrov, which, um, and I believe that's how it's pronounced, because everyone else in the comic just has trouble pronouncing it. Um, so far as I know, it's pronounced as Fukukrov, and um, it's based on like a Russian owl. But um, Dr. Fukukrov is, like Tails, is a mechanical genius. Um, he's not as intelligent as Tails, and he ends up, Tails has to fight one of Dr. Fukukrov's machines, Eventually ends up taking it apart, and um, Fukukrov uses his catchphrase impeccable and keeps on saying it over and over and over again as Tails destroys this machine. Um, Tails then replies to him, keep on saying impeccable over and over and over again by, um, you keep on using that word, but I'm not sure you know what, the, what it means. 
this references into the Princess Bride, where we have the character named Dessini, who keeps on saying the word inconceivable to uh, everything the dreaded pirate Roberts does. And it makes it very fun. And there's a very funny scene where they get to the top of the cliff, they cut the rope, and, um, and uh, Roberts is still climbing the cliff, and Vicini uses his catchphrase, inconceivable. In which case, then, a, uh, uh, Diego Montoya, he replies with, um, you keep, keep on using that, that word, but I don't think you know what it means. Of course, all out of Princess Bride. Really, really good film if you haven't watched it. Um, go and watch it if you did. And like I said, Tails makes a reference to that scene in, um, in use number 20 of Sonic Universe. Okay, then. Now then, going forward on to number two, we go into um, Sonic Universe 30 years later. Um, this is the specialized arc pack, which are all, which they literally have them for all of them. Well, okay, not all of them, like all the way up to um, arc 10, if I remember correctly. And just so you know, they're all the way up to the 75th comic, and each and every arc is in four parts. So, yeah. Well, technically they just passed the 75th, they're like on the 76th, and then about to make it onto the 77th comic. But, um... So, in 30 years later, we are following into, obviously, the future of the entire series. And we're having a lot of fun and everything, and we learn about um, Sonic's kids that he has with Sally. What makes this really interesting, though, is that the kids are named uh, Manic Acorn and Sonia Acorn. This references back to Sonic's siblings, um, Manic Hedgehog and Sonia Hedgehog, from Sonic Underground, which for those of you who don't know, Sonic Underground was one of Sega's many Sonic the Hedgehog television series that aired in the late 90s. And um, it was actually pretty funny. Um, it had a good, it had a very good plot line if you could get past the middle of the music because, well, that's what they did in kids shows back then. And um, yeah, that's just what it is. But um, I keep on, like hardly anybody that I talk to knows of this fact. And so, the fact that Archie Comics um, would reference back to one of their original, to one of Sega's original concepts, and one of their own concepts, because they worked together on Sonic Underground in order to create it, uh, just brightens my day. It's a great way to reference to the past that some people would get, others wouldn't. Um, if you're a diehard fan, you would know. And um, yeah, so that's fun. And then finally, um, the number one fact is something that hasn't even happened yet, but we do know of it thanks to the DeviantArt page of who I'm about to um, reference, and I'm not getting paid or anything to say this. Um, this is just somebody I found. Um, th look up the Deviant artist, even Stanley. He refers to himself as a professional Sonic fan. Um, he does his own uh, comic called Ghosts of the Future that reference that's like takes place in an alternate dimension and has all these really crazy stuff. Is up on the 13th chapter right now. And I'm still, and I'm anxiously waiting every day for the next page. And so it's really, really well done and uh, really good. So go check that out if you don't know of it. But basically, um, he noted in a journal about um, how he's going to be doing a next part in Sonic Universe. He's actually going to be doing the cover of Sonic Universe 79, 80, 81, and 82 which is a brand new um, silver arc in Sonic Universe called um, The Silver Age. And um, so he's doing the covers for those, and he also, writ uh, he also wrote the story for it as well. So he's teamed up with RG Comics in order to do um, basically what he enjoys, which is just um, bringing forth Sonic stories. And so I think that's really cool. Um, and like I said, this is open knowledge on his DeviantArt. If you haven't read Ghosts of the Future, look him up or look up Ghost of the Future. It's a really well done story, especially for Sonic fans. And um, yeah, that's basically this video. And so um, I'll see you next time. And uh, let's go to the end credit. Hey guys, thank you for watching this video. Um, if you enjoyed, make sure to like and subscribe. Also, um, yeah, this is just something I wanted to do. Uh, hmm. Right, just look out for more videos in the future. Um, I'm going to be having a lot more stuff. Also, if everything goes the way that I want to, um, we're going to have a little bit of a slight change. But um, hopefully that does happen. If not, then, well, it doesn't happen. Like I said, if things go my way, there's going to be a little bit of changes on the channel. 
Um, so yeah, just look out for more videos. Make sure to um, subscribe, like. I've already said that. Um, leave a comment if you have any other facts that you know about the Sonic Universe comics that um, you think I might have left out. And then, of course, um, just make sure to look out for more videos again. And uh, until next time, this is Team Dude 291 signing out.